been in bodybuilding since, uh, let me see, I think I remember the exact day. I think it was June 92. Not the exact, but month June 92, I was living in Thailand and uh, I was basically just hanging out over there with a few friends from Germany. You know, they, uh, uh, one of my best friends from Germany, he owned a hotel in Thailand. That's how I got over there. He invited me. And I was basically hanging out at night with some of my friends that I met over there. And they all went to the gym during the day. And uh, um, I just got fed up with some of these guys walking around, you know, trying to, you know, walk around all buff. And I had a bet going on with one of the guys saying that uh, I would look bigger and better than him in less than three months. So that was a $100 bet. So that's how it all started. So in June 92, I started training, and I think it was like end of July or beginning of August where he paid me my $100. <laughs> that was basically, that's how it, that's how it all started. And then uh, I remember walking down by the beach in Thailand, and there was this guy that approached me asking me what show I'm getting ready for. And I was, I was like, nah, I'm just training, you know, I'm just doing a little bit, you know, during the day. So I can go out at night, you know, you know, do my thing, you know, don't have to feel guilty all day and the next day. And he said, since he's good friends with the, uh, the president of uh, that particular association back then, uh, he invited me the next time I was in Germany to come see him. Some, something I did like two months later while I was visiting my parents in Germany. So I called this guy up, I went to his house, he introduced me to the, to the president of the association and uh, he looked at me and said, um, no, matter of fact, I remember he put a tape in of the Mr. Universe in 1992. And uh, while he put the tape in, he's looking at me and asked me, could you hang with that? And I thought he was joking. I said, sure. So he said, I invite you for the 1993 Mr. Universe. And I was like, yeah, what time do you want me to be there? You know, because I still think he was joking. So he said, well, we have a show that's called the National Qualifier for the German national team a week prior to the uh, Mr. Universe. He would like for me to go there to compete, just you know, just to see if I can hang with the standard. And uh, that's basically all he said, and he left. So uh, I was like, okay. So after he, he was gone, I asked my friend, I said, was he serious? He said, yeah. So I said, I, need, I better get back to the gym then. So that was June 92. So I went back to Thailand. No, it was it, uh, June, I started training. That was like sometime in August, September. No, even November, after the 92 universe. So I had about one year to get ready for the universe in 93, and that's something that I took advantage of. And I uh, went back to Thailand, trained for a year. And in, 19, in October 93, I, I placed fourth at the, my first ever show, which was the Mr. Universe in England. And from then on, everything is basically history. How I keep myself motivated, uh, I mean, it, it wasn't really that easy living in Thailand and, and, and getting the motivation that most of the athletes have over here when they, you know, train in gyms like Olds Venice or where they see all the guys where they can steal moves and stuff like that. I, I never had that because, like I said, I was in Thailand and I was basically the only one that was really serious. But what I always did was I always got a hold of the DVDs. Everybody has his own DVD or video back then. So what I did was I put in the DVDs and the VCRs constantly, all day. Every workout, I picked the guy that I admired the most for that body part that I trained. I threw in his DVD, let's say, let's say for, let's say just for instance, back. I put Ronnie Coleman's DVD in there, you know, before the back workout, and I'll just go through the whole tape. You know, and I take that motivation right to the gym when I train back. And the same thing I did with Kevin Shoulders and basically everybody. I have everybody's DVD, and some guys have more than one, and I have them all. That's what I use to this day 
to motivate myself, you know. It's easier w w now living in the U.S. because, like I said, I can come down here to Venice and train at Goals with Charles Glass, something I did back in 98 and in 2003 when I came in my all-time best because it's just such a motivational kick to be training with Charles Glass because, you know, he looks at you and he analyzes your body and he immediately knows what exercises to do and he creates angles that you would never even think of doing the same machine and all this next thing you know is you're training a total different part doing the same machine that you always use. So that even just only that motivates me to the fullest and I come here like to fully concentrate only on my training and my diet. You know, I stay in the room, I don't do nothing, I don't party. I go to the gym six o'clock in the morning to do my cardio and when I do my cardio, I picture, this, picture myself what I look like on stage and, you know, and, and I always look back on pictures from before, you know, and I look at pre-contest pictures, something that I always, you know, put out on the Internet. I was basically the first one doing all these pre-contest pictures on the Internet leading up to the show because I figured me living in Thailand, you know, it's very hard to create a hype in the United States. So that's basically what I did. I just posted pictures every week to see, you know, let them, everybody see my progress that I was doing. And I still look back on pictures, let's say now, I'm four weeks out from the Arnold. I'm looking at pictures four weeks out from other shows to compare where I'm at, you know. And I'm going to say right now I'm pretty happy, you know. I mean, I'm totally calm. I'm, everything works fine. I have no injuries, you know, and I'm, I'm ready to bring it at the Arnold this year, you know. But like I said, the motivation comes from all the other competitors, you know. Looking at myself, you know, you, you got to know what you want, you know. And it's just that... You can't, you can't slide to the side a little bit. If you're 100% focused, you got to just do one thing. You can't do three, four things at the same time. You're always very important. You got to have whoever your partner is, your wife or your girlfriend. If she's not supportive, you know, that's going to be, it's going to be hard because uh, 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 all bodybuilders, once they start dieting and getting ready for a show, they turn into some boring, you know, never want to do anything you know, fools, I would say, you know, and unless you really understand why as a partner, you know, it's very hard to stick around, you know, so I must say that uh, having a wife like I do is basically 120% uh, help in everything I do, you know, even me coming here for two weeks, she would never say no or say stay home. Or she, would, she was the one that told me to stay two weeks at a time, why only one week and drive back and then drive back, so... Yeah, basically everything works out like that for me, you know. I'll keep myself motivated just like that, and if anybody comes out with a new tape, that's the tape I'm going to buy. Or I, may, I might not buy it, I might get it for free, but, you know, that's the one that's going to be in my DVD just for future shows. My favorite body part... Um, Right now, I think I have, every body part is one of my favorites because I'm trying to improve overall. But um, to answer your question, you know, when you start training, everybody has the same favorite body parts, which is the chest and the biceps, because that's basically the only thing that's been hanging out of the tank top, you know. So, but once I started getting serious in the bodybuilding, you know, I know I, I know I had to improve on, uh, you know, every body part. So. I made basically legs my favorite body part. I made back my favorite body part. So I, I don't really have a favorite body part right now. You know, when it comes to uh, motivation and training, you know, they're all basically uh, equal. If you ask me what is your best body parts, then I might have to throw a few in, like shoulders, chest, and arms, you know. But uh, my favorites, they're all pretty much equal right now. The hardest body part to train would be the legs, I would say, yeah, quads. Because it just takes so much out of your quads and also back. But you can train each body part to failure and feel it, you know, almost the same. But since quads and back is a bigger muscle, you know, you need more oxygen and then you obviously need more energy. Different, uh, my, the different of my, you know, my diet. They differ. Uh, off season, I very much like to eat carbs, keep my body energized and full, and you know. And uh, when I switch over to a contest prep, which is basically 12 weeks out from a show, 
I'll switch from uh, going from high carbs, sometimes first into real low carbs, before I totally switch into a high fat diet, which uh, uh, basically makes my brain switch from glucose into ketosis, which means that I'm feeding my body no carbs, but instead of carbs, I feed high essential fats in order of olive oil on salads, uh, pecan nuts, almonds, I'm talking peanut butter and a lot of steak, red meat, and like oily fish like um, salmon, orange roughy, you know, that's basically what I eat when I'm getting ready for a show. So what that does is it'll, 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 it'll take a few days for my brain to switch from glucose to ketosis, and which helps me to uh, burn body fat so much faster than a regular low-carb diet that is almost unbelievable. I mean, I've tried so many diets in all the years that I've been competing, and it was basically all with carbs, low, high, moderate, a couple of low-carb days, then one high-carb day. I, and ever since I do that fat diet, I mean, my body comes around in less than three, four weeks. And the, the, what I like about it is I don't have that bloated feeling from all the carbs. I don't have that, that appetite after you eat, like, rice two minutes later. Two, I'm going to say 30 minutes later. I'm hungry again. With a high essential fat diet, I basically stay... My, my, my stomach pretty stays calm all day. I eat because I have to eat it, but I'm not starving. And I also don't lose any en energy until probably towards the end, which will happen anyway because of, uh, you know, you overtrain, you do all the cardio. But just, just uh, you know, talking about the diet, I mean, with the high-fat diet, I mean, it's just, for me, uh, the easiest way to get in shape. Place and fourth in my first show was basically, uh, I mean, one of the greatest experiences I ever had because it was the biggest show you know, in, that, in that particular association, the Mr. Universe. I mean, mostly all the athletes that go there are qualified in uh, some kind of nationals, you know, in their own country where they, um, you know, be flying into England to represent their country. And I basically just got a special invite from uh, the president, you know, so I went over there and I had no expectations, you know, I just wanted to see where I stand and I basically fit right in and placed fourth with no name and that gave me um, enough motivation to uh, give it another full year to train for the same show since I was qualified as a top six um, 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 finalist uh, for the following year. So I went back to Thailand and I remember that was 94 I was getting ready for the uh, Mr. Universe in 94, and I also opened up my gym in Thailand in 94, and I was looking for a name for it. I said, what, what, what can I name the gym? I said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name it Universe Gym because I'm going to win that title, so it's going to make sense for me naming the gym. I opened the gym in uh, February 94, and I uh, went back to the Universe in uh, October 94, and I got second. So uh, I said to myself, now I got to go again for another year. And back in 95, I went back over there and I, I won. I won the Mr. Universe in 95. They told me the, whole, the event hotel was something higher than Dallas and there was no more uh, rooms available. So I had to book my flight and I just tried to, I went to the airport and I just Went looking around for a hotel because the event hotel was fully booked. And it was basically all stress, you know, and I uh, found a place somewhere in downtown Dallas, made it to the uh, athletes meeting, you know, to weigh in and uh, basically uh, did pretty well for my first nationals. I got fourth with no name. Nobody knew who I was, you know, and then uh, after fourth place at the Nationals, which I think was great, I told myself I'm going to get ready for the next year's Nationals because I figured the Nationals is the easiest show since every class winner gets a pro card. See, the USA is it's just the overall. Back then it was just the overall. So, and, you know, they have their favorites on the West Coast. You know, it's very hard to get in there. So I said, I told myself I'm getting ready for the, for the Nationals next year. And I remember Lonnie Teeper was the one that told me after the Nationals, don't wait, go to the USA's. And then I was like, you know what? You know, he's right. So seven months later, I went to the USA to Las Vegas. Same thing. Boom. That was the first year where they, invent, where they had the new uh, super heavyweights. So they added another class. So 
I was a super heavyweight. I weigh in at the Nationals, I weigh in at 215. Seven months later at the USA's, I weigh in 233 and won the overall, my first ever USA's. And that's how I got my pro card, and that's how it all happened, and that was back in 98. So uh, now I was getting real close to my dream. Now I'm finally IFBB pro, and I didn't get my IFBB pro card like some of the athletes by just being one of the best bodybuilders in their country, and they give out pro cards like it's like a membership, you know what I mean? So I can say, honestly say, I came to the U.S. and now won my pro card by bringing the overall to the Mr. Mr. USA, which is basically the hardest uh, qualification for your pro card. The difference between my off-season diet and my pre-contest diet is basically an off-season diet will look like this. Uh, my first meal, the times are always the same. My first meal in the morning will, uh, will probably be uh, 12 egg whites or either uh, 75 to 90 grams of whey isolate protein and uh, two cups of oats. Then uh, my next meal would be a post-workout shake where I'll have like 60 grams of whey isolate with some like 75, 200 grams of Vitargo, which is uh, simple carbs. Then I go home, I have a two o'clock meal, which will be uh, either steak, chicken, the 12 ounces, and uh, again, rice, because I'm, I'm a rice eater, I love rice. Rice, like two, two and a half, three cups, you know? And uh, you know, if I'm not that hungry, I just eat a little bit less. And then my five o'clock meal will be basically the same thing again and then uh, go back to the gym, have another post-workout shake, just the same shake, with 60 grams of uh, whey isolate and between 75 and 100 grams of uh, Vitargo, which is simple carbs. And then I get home at night, I'll have another meal, which basically be steak, rice, and uh, 11 o'clock before I go to sleep, I'll have another shake with uh, sometimes a little bit of fruit or whatever just lays around in the house. That's off season. Now, what's, when I switch to pre-contest, I'll eliminate the carbs and I'll add the fats. So that means at 8 o'clock, I'll get up in the morning and I'll have either the egg whites and the protein shake. Then, uh, and with the protein shake, I'll have two tablespoons of peanut butter. Or if I don't want the peanut butter in the morning, I can have like a quarter cup of almonds or pecan nuts. Then I'll go to the gym, you know, to do my first workout. Instead of post-workout shakes, there's not gonna be a post-workout shake no more because there's no carbs. So when I get back home, I'll have a steak, you know, and just a big salad with like two tablespoons of olive oil and uh, two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar because I like that. And then again, I'll add like a quarter cup of pecan nuts with that. Then two hours, uh, three hours later, two o'clock, I'll have uh, orange roughy fish. And uh, same thing again, either I have uh, the nuts or peanut butter. Then sometimes I add a shake and instead of the fish, I just drink a shake, so it's up to me. And then at five o'clock, I'll have another meal you know, basically the same thing, just some, you know, protein, a little bit of vegetables, and uh, almonds or pecan nuts. Then I go back to the gym, come back at night, steak, salad, olive oil, vinegar, pecan nuts, 11 o'clock before I sleep, protein shake with two tablespoons of peanut butter, that's it. And that keeps me in a perfect mood all throughout my diet. I've been doing this for eight weeks now and I have no problems.
right, tell me about your chest training. What what do you focus on nowadays when you're hitting chest? What do you start with? What what's the uh, main focus? For me, I mean, size the size of the chest right now is not a it's not a problem anymore. What I'm basically focusing on is you know get more detail, deeper striations, and you know, and, and, and just, you know that full that make sure that you have that full look when you walk on stage. You know, size I don't think I have a problem with the chest. You know. So like I said, striations, detail, and the fullness when you, when you step on stage, that's what comes for me. That's so, what I'm focusing on when I'm training. As far as exercises go, what would you focus on to, to get the striations? Well, uh, of course, flies. It goes so much took advantage of the uh, Cypex fly machine. And then there's another machine in the second room where I don't even know the name of that machine, you know. You have the cushions, but we don't really grab it with yeah, the hand instead yeah. of the cushions. Yeah, the tech tech. And all of those here. Yeah. And uh, stuff like that, you know. And then, of course, the uh, hammer strength eyes and tail machines, just to make sure you really focus and isolate the muscle and uh, did a good job on this. So it's about squeezing and feeling. You're, you're not so concerned about weight at this Not time, anymore. Right? I'm, yeah. not, I'm not worried about the weight at all. I'm just worried about peak contraction. If you know, you keep holding it, it's not a problem. Started my chest workout day number one. First training of the day was chest. We started off, we switched it up every training. Today uh, we basically relied on uh, a lot of hammer strength, isolateral machines. Uh, and we started off with the uh, incline hammer strength. Um, what Charles likes me, like, like, you know, has me doing is we drop the seat very low, move the body all the way out. That way we can get a peak contraction on top of the chest. From there, we moved to uh, the wide chest press. Uh, matter of fact, we went from the incline to the decline at the uh, pec fly machine. And uh, at the end, we did the uh, dumbbell flies, real straight arm with wide stretch, way behind your back. Not even to the side, going back to the rear to get an ultimate stretch of your side chest. Which I prefer, I like to have a big wide chest, you know, in order to be able to fill it out. So that was basically the exercise we did for chest today. Um, we're going to come back later on for biceps and triceps and uh, haven't really made up my mind yet what we're going to do later, but uh, I think just before we start training, we'll figure that out. I'll see you all at, I'll see you all at the uh, second workout of the day. Peace.
That's what a bodybuilder needs. You know, get that pump. Um, what about your biceps training? What, what does it look like right now? Biceps training, I do that. That's part two of day one. Biceps and triceps, we right. train it together. Okay. I used to train it separately. Biceps and then triceps on a different day. What we did this time was, we basically did train biceps, triceps together, but we did one set, one exercise, triceps, each four sets, and then we switch to a biceps exercise, and we just go back and forth. That way you have the pump in both biceps and triceps, which is basically uh, exactly what we're looking for, you know, we're looking for the ultimate pump, and the longer we can keep the blood in the muscle, the better it is for us, so uh, I kind of like that, so you know, I just rotate the exercise from time to time, I don't always do the same, because there's so many biceps exercises, so many triceps, so you choose three or four, and you rotate going back and forth the biceps, triceps. 
So you do three or four and four sets for each exercise? Yeah, if I do three sets, right. I do four exercises. I mean, if I do three exercises, I would do four sets. Okay. If I do four exercises, I would do only three. So, so it's 12, 12 sets, sets total yeah. for each. And what's the pump like after you? Ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. Even on no pumps, I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Is that you think you'll stick with that way for now? Yeah, I mean, especially pre contest, because it really works, because you keep that blood in there and you keep them keeping it in there, and I think it works, yeah. Do you have to train forearms at all? Or you Never in my life I trained forearms or traps. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how that works. I don't know. Why, I, I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty If I train traps, I can't look to the side for about longer than five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should all be so lucky. <sighs> Two of day one, biceps, triceps, train together. Something that I don't do all the time. There's some exceptions like today and pre-conscious where I like to do it. 
I rotate biceps, triceps, back and forth. One set biceps and one exercise of biceps, triceps, and so on. For like uh, three to four sets each exercise. Anywhere between three and four exercises, all depends on how I feel. Um, today we basically started with uh, the bicep curl of the machine. Get the biceps all warmed up. From there we did uh, triceps extension. Get the triceps nice and warm, elbows warmed up. And then uh, from there we went to uh, dumbbell. Hammer curls. Very good overall movement. The biceps, the brachialis, and for the forearms. From there we did the uh, line skull crusher, decline. Something that's always, uh, I call it the bread and butter for the triceps. Any French press or nose break, what we call that movement. Then uh, we came right over here. If you want on biceps curl, off the machine. And at the end we finished off with uh, triceps overhead extension with the cable machine. And I got to say, I have a real nice overall pump in my arms right now. And uh, it feels good, even being on no car for such a long time. And then still go to the gym and achieve that major pump. That probably won't last as long as a pump lasts when you uh, carb load it. But, you know, I'm enjoying every minute of it right now. And uh, that's basically why I'm here. You know, I'm having fun. I'm enjoying what I do. You know, and... Uh, like I said, and walking out of the gym with 22 inch guns, baby. You know what I mean? That's what we train for. So stay tuned for day two tomorrow, which will be quads, hamstrings, and calves. So don't go nowhere. Be right here. Day two coming up. Peace.
You know how to use, but you have no idea that you can use it like that for a whole different part of the quad. And uh, that's what I took advantage of. So we had a few uh, crazy uh, Charles Glass exercises, you know, to get the cuts in my quad deeper. And get my deeper separation. Deeper separation gives you a fuller look on stage. And that was, like I said, one of the main reasons for me coming here. Uh, do you, feel, do you see them? Do you feel them? Oh yeah, I feel them. I feel them. If you see them, I don't know, but I feel them. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, we also did hamstrings. You know, uh, basically hamstrings and quad back to back. Also something that uh, I was paying a lot of attention to because I think it's just nice when you stand from the, from the back and you know, you got nice split hands. Yeah. You know, and uh, some cross riding boots. I think that's just the last sort of sport the way it is right now. And that shows that somebody's really, really in good shape, you know. Back in the days, you know, nobody cared about no cross riding boots. Right. But now there's such a sign of you being on, that's the way they call it. So, yeah, and uh, like I said, we did hamstrings, three, four exercises. We liked, I very much like the uh, spin.
fifth legged uh, um, hack squat, reverse. Oh, were you facing the Facing, the facing the machine, yeah. 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 And, uh, that's crazy stretch. You know, you can see all the details when you bend down here. Yeah, that's, that's a good exercise. I like that. You can't do it on every hack squat. You know, it's got to be, you have like the flex machine works real good. And, uh, yeah.
So that was day number two. AM training started with quads this morning. I usually warm my knees up with a little bit of leg extension to get my knees and legs nice and warm. From there, we started with the 45-degree uh, leg press, went up to a moderate amount of weight, and um, right after that, we uh, went to a hack squat, and uh, what Charles had me doing was, I let him explain it, put a pad behind my back. Well, one reason we, we put the pad behind the back so we can keep the back well, I'm sorry, keep the body more in a squat position so we get more of the quad and glute and less of the lower back. That way the lower back doesn't get inflamed. Now, all you got to do is take it deep as you want to without putting pressure on the knees. And it works great. I, I must admit, I never have any back problems. My knees don't hurt doing that squat. And I feel fine going up heavy. And from there, we went straight to the... Uh... Well, we went into the third room where we use the sled machine. And the reason we use the sled machine is so we can use one leg. And what they, that does is it put more pressure on the outside sweep of the quad and also still attack the glute at the same time. So we work in the double function there. We keep the leg back far enough so that it keeps your body in a twist position so you get like a lunge almost position, but it really attacks that outer sweep and the glute. And I can tell you, my glute's on fire on my outer sweep too, so it works perfect. And uh, from that, we went straight to the- uh, Vertical press. Vertical leg press, which is one of my favorite because you know, you can, uh, like he had had me doing it this time with basically on my toes, which will work more the teardrop area in the front. You know, you can also switch foot positions and work the, you know, the upper leg and the outer sweep. But uh, we mostly work that machine for my uh, teardrop and the lower part of my quads. One of the most neglected part of the quad is the, right by the knee, the upper part of that knee. So what we try to do is put that pressure right there. All the pressure evolves right around the lower part and it goes up a little bit, but it doesn't go really far up on the, on the quad, but it stays in that central area and you put a lot of blood in there. Now you're working it, working it, working it. And so what, what we normally do is try to do four sets. We don't go very heavy, but we try to make it slow and concentrated. And then uh, at the very end, we come out here to, uh, to use the leg extension, also modified by Charles Glass which you uh, probably realized that I was almost laying almost flat on my back. And uh, I had the uh, pad a little higher than uh, right above my ankles. I would say higher, which will bring a lot of stress on the upper quads too. And this is mostly where I feel it, the upper part right here. Well, as you, when you sit up, you miss that. What we want to do is work it all the way up into almost the hip flexor. So we let them lay back and we stand all the way and squeeze that muscle. Most of the time we try to get them to turn the feet out or turn it in so we work different parts of that quad. And it works pretty effective. So you can, as you notice, those legs are hot right now. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm on fire, you know? And uh, if the Charles Glass approved, you know, that's a good sign. So we will come back for hamstrings later on today and calves. That was it for uh, day number two AM. See you guys PM, peace.
right there. Come on. Good separation. Come on. Look at that. That's good. Come on now. Good, good. Do it again. Do it again. Come on. Come on. Use the hamstrings and pull. Come on. Push it up with the hands. There you go. Good, good. Do it again. Do it again. Come on. Yeah. Come on now. That's it. Squeeze. Now you're working it. Now you're working it. That's it. Come on. Do it again. Up. Last one. Last one. Up. stretch a muscle and then
right, that was day number two, session number two of the day, hamstrings and calves. Um, what we did today for hamstrings was basically, first let me introduce Paul Finn here. Paul Finn is the uh, partner trainer with Charles Glass together. They've been basically running a personal training uh, instruction company, I would say. Paul is always there. He's always in the background. If you don't see him in the video, he was always there watching over me, and uh, I just want to make sure everybody knows who he is. Paul Finn, working with Charles Glass together. So you train with him, you train with Charles. It's basically the same thing. Thanks a lot, Paul. Appreciate it. So we went from, uh, we started up with doing um, hammer strength, uh, um, seated leg curls, which is uh, probably the best exercise for me to warm up. And um, basically went from there to, uh, what we do after that? To, uh, yeah, went to the lying leg curls over here in, in, in a slight angle. From there, we went to exercise number three, which is uh, basically what you want to call it, skip legged deadlifts on the. Uh, right, stiff legged deadlifts on the uh, on the hack squat in reverse, which is just like Paul mentioned, works the glute area and uh, stretches the hamstrings real nice. And uh, from there we did calves, with standing calf raises, uh, a couple of them, what do you call this one here? I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's just a newer model of the lying leg curls. Yeah. It has angles so yeah, like nice a, and they move like it. Yeah, like halfway seated calf machine. And at the end, you know, just uh, wrap it up with the seated calf machine right here. And that's basically all we do for hamstring and calves because uh, that's all you need to do. So. I'm looking forward to day number three coming up tomorrow, which will be the final day of my uh, of my full body workout, which will be back in the morning. Don't want to miss that, and most definitely don't want to miss shoulders tomorrow afternoon. So I'm looking forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Until then, peace out. Right. It's all about detail, squeezing, holding, and doing like iso, iso movements. No more crazy mass stuff that nobody needs to do no more. I don't worry about the size anymore. I'm just worried about detail. That's it. Shoulders, shoulders is always a part of it. I don't have to really, really worry about it because I think if I would train shoulder for a year, they would still look the same, you know? Because I mean, I do chest. And what if I do, I, my shoulders get a little work. So, um, but I still train my shoulders hard, you know, but I keep two basic movements, you know, like side ladders, dumbbells, front raises, stuff like that, you know. So, so to get detailed, do you do more volume? Is it higher reps? Or not really. It's just the way you, you know, slower movement with squeezing it, on, you know, on top of the move, you know, on top of the contraction. So it's not really higher volume. I'm just trying to feel there's a muscle mind connection, trying to connect it there.
See where they are first.
I never got an off season with him. Never to this day. No, never, we never have. All I need is four weeks off season. Four weeks off to put on that necessary muscle and then go through the diet. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm telling you, I'm gonna come back. You can see this. You can see this. Let's do one more of these here. Come on. Look at that. You got up the wrong way. I'm like, damn. I'm like, we on target. <laughs>
got me today. I'm glad this is the final day. Final day. Mr. Charles Glass and Paul Finn done did it again. Tore my ass up. I don't even have no appetite. Contracting, squeezing on top of movement, that kind of thing, instead of uh, lifting, you know, heavy weights. So uh, today, what we did was we started off with uh, the seated uh, hammer strength uh, row, two, two arms, which is very good for warm up. Brings up, bring the lat all the way down to the to the to the to the, to the end. 
and uh, we started off with that. Uh, from there, we went uh, to do the hammer strength high rolls, which is also a very good uh, um, exercise for the for the lats and bring the lats a little lower. It's, this is what I'm you know mainly work focus on, and um, from there we went straight to uh, the cable uh, high cable pulley high rolls reverse laying on the bench, um, pulling it to the chest, bringing it down, contracting, and uh, uh, as exercise number four from there, we went back uh, to the uh, hammer strength machines and we used the low row, kind of like, kind of mimics the uh, dumbbell rows, just isolated one arm with the hammer strength. I really like that, you throw that in sometimes. Um, and after completing that, we went back down to do a wide grip, pull downs to the front, which is sitting basically all the way back, leaning forward, bringing the elbows in front of you as, as much as possible. That way you squeeze and contract your lower lats on, 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 on the bottom of the movement. Something that I really need to focus on and that's why I put a lot of focus on that. And uh, after the final exercise, we did um, dumbbell, partial dumbbell deadlifts, which is, uh, Basically two exercises in one, I would say. I use it for the erectness coming up, and then I bring the elbows high and squeeze to also get you know a little bit of the lats going. So uh, it's a great movement at the end, and uh, it works wonders. And uh, all this training, uh, basically, my goal was to come here and train with Charles to uh, improve my back, especially the detail. And so far, I'm really happy with what we did. So like I said, that was day three. Part number one, we'll come back later on for part number two, which will be shoulders. Um, stay tuned. You don't want to miss that. Looking forward to see you all later. Peace out.
All right, fellas, that was the last workout and the last exercise of today and the final workout of this uh, DVD. Day number three, we did back this morning and I just finished off my, uh, my PM workout, which was shoulders. Um, we started off with, uh, I like to start off with side laterals because um, I like to concentrate, you know, and I like to be fresh when I concentrate on my side laterals. And if you noticed that I was, do when I was doing them, I turned my wrist all the way in. That way I isolate the outer, the outer uh, shoulder even more. And uh, it's just a beautiful exercise, just like that. From there, I did uh, straight the front raises, uh, also dumbbell. And then uh, from front raises, we went all the way in the back to uh, Smith Machine Military Presses. Did a few sets there, and then brought it back in here to uh, the uh, Hammer Machine Shoulder Press. And there, I reverse set in it the opposite way, which if you haven't tried it, try that, you will see the difference. It's a great exercise. Um, from there, we went straight to uh, um, rear delts on the pec deck machine. A few sets there, and I wrapped it up with uh, extra wide, extra wide grip, upright rows, where basically don't use my hands. I just work with my elbows, which works very good for me because it separates the shoulders from the chest to the traps. It gives you that deep cut and gives you that nice round look. And uh, like I said, that was it for shoulders, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, because I loved it, and I can't wait to get back at it again tomorrow. But like I said, this is what you want to look at. This is what you want to learn from, you know? And uh, once again, this is Dennis James. Peace out. I'm Dennis James, and I like peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a test. <laughs> That's for the outtakes. I just want to make sure y'all alert. We are. And action.
and Marina Pacific. Uh -huh. And another one, Firehouse. That's all I knew. So I came here in 97. I'll never forget that. I was walking up and down here for a whole day. <laughs> it was a weekend. I, you know, I, I, was, I don't know why. I wouldn't want to stand there for too long and watch these guys because I felt stupid. But I kept walking past them. So I didn't look at it every time, you know. Yeah, that really means something to me, you know. This is, what body, this is where it all started. Arnold, Colombo, all these guys used to come in here and train in front of thousands of people, you know. Now it's you. It's history. Yeah, now I'm here. Probably, probably holding on to the same plates these guys used to hold on to back in the days, you know. And this is kind of inspiring and more motivating, so. It's energy, man. Solid energy. Oh, okay. yeah, gotta get ripped up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yo, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> Does it mean his biceps is too big for him to get to it or that he has no neck? What is it? <laughs>